All right, I want to welcome everybody who is um, joining us here um, in our virtual space. Going to give it just a little moment to let folks kind of come on into um, in, into our space here before we go ahead and get going. Um, but just a couple of housekeeping things we want to share. First things first, we do want to welcome you to vir virtual college exploration for all Wisconsin students uh, sponsored by the Wisconsin Association for College Admissions Counseling and StriveScan. Um, so, and we're really excited that you're here and joining us to learn a little bit more about Cardinal Stritch University. Um, so just a couple of housekeeping pieces to keep in mind for our session today. Um, if you do wanna ask questions and we really encourage you to, to get those juices flowing with thinking about some questions, you can enter those into the Q&A icon, which you're gonna find um, on your screen um, next to, um, um, okay, uh, next to where you can view, um, you know, participants on here as well. Um, do know that we are in a webinar form, however, so your camera and microphone are off. So that Q and A function is going to be the space where you can ask those questions of our wonderful presenters here today. Um, and just to let you know that this recording will be available um, afterwards. So if you want to revisit some information that you heard, or you want to pass this along to some uh, some friends as well that might not be able to visit our session, um, do make sure that, uh, do know that you can go to WACAC.com to access that. And that's also a space where you can find any other sessions that you can sign up for um, either later this evening or into next week. Um, so with that, hopefully that takes care of some of the questions that you might have throughout here. And I'll go ahead and turn it over to our wonderful presenters from Cardinal Stretch. Awesome, thank you. Uh, welcome students. Um, I, uh, my name is John Hurdy, and I'm the Assistant Director of Undergraduate Admissions here at Stritch. And I'm uh, joined by my colleague, uh, Jess, who I will uh, allow her to introduce herself. Awesome, yes, welcome everyone. As John said, my name is Jess. I am the Senior Admissions Counselor at Cardinal Stritch University. I am very excited that you guys are joining us today to talk to you guys a little bit about Stritch. Um, I love the big college fairs. I love talking to all the students. So it's kind of weird sitting here in my home and not being able to talk to everyone right away. Um, but I'm really happy that you guys are here and joining us and that we can show you an admissions presentation, show you some pictures of our students in campus and talk a little bit more about the details of who Stritch is, how do you become a Stritch student and so on. So, yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Jess. Yeah, I'm going to get the presentation going then. Um, I do see that there's already someone uh, typing in the Q&A. That's awesome. We do recommend that. Uh, we'll do our best to answer those questions um, throughout the presentation. If it's something that's a little more personal to you, uh, you know, we're going to keep that anonymous. So we're uh, not necessarily going to respond in the chat. Um, and rather just to keep things um, anonymous, we'll just kind of talk to it. And uh, if it's anything really private that you want to talk about, uh, we can discuss that with you uh, separately at another time. So let's get this going. Woohoo! <laughs> All right. Um, so again, uh, we are from Cardinal Stritch University. And I'm going to start here with uh, a picture of our class of 2023. Um, so with COVID, we were not able to get a class of 2024 uh, because we don't want people standing that close to each other right now. Um, if, if we took a, class, uh, a new picture of our incoming class, it would be much more spread out, of course. But you know, as you can see, looking at the picture here of all of our students, uh, there's a lot of diversity. And that's something that we really pride ourselves on at the university here is our incredibly diverse campus. Um, we represent more than 40 countries around the world, um, which is pretty special and significant considering uh, the size of our undergraduate population. So a uh, very high number of international students, which brings a, a, new, you know, a different level of vibrancy and uh, uniqueness to the campus. So you know, it's, it's really like an international campus where you're, you're getting viewpoints from around the world. Um, all right, I'm gonna pass it over to Jess. Awesome. Yeah, so uh, this is a picture of our campus. Did you see that we have a question about um, race from Brandon in the Q&A? So we'll touch on that in just a minute. Our slides kind of continue into, into that um, theme of diversity at Stritch. But if you have not seen a picture of Stritch or been to our campus or even know where we're located, uh, we are on um, kind of like the northeast side of Milwaukee, more in a residential area. All of our um, buildings are connected except for um, two over there. So you can kind of see that on the screen there. So that's really awesome that even though we are in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and it gets very cold and rainy and snowy, 
you're probably only gonna need your coat if you're going to two of those buildings, which is really awesome. Uh, we are about 15 minutes from downtown Milwaukee, which is great too for um, just that city life, but still feeling like you are in a small community. It's great for internships and opportunities. It's great to explore the new area to you if you're not from Milwaukee. We're also about maybe five minutes from the lake and some really gorgeous views of Lake Michigan and parks over there. So a really great opportunity for students to check that out too. I'm a little biased, but I think our campus is absolutely beautiful. Um, lots of greenery. We're also rated the safest campus in the state of Wisconsin. I love telling that to students and especially their parents because everyone gets a little nervous. Oh, my son or daughter is going to Milwaukee. Is there a lot of crime? It's a big city. We're rated the safest campus. So that's something really awesome. It's something that we're really proud about. So keep that in mind as you're kind of thinking about Stritch and thinking about other universities in the Milwaukee area um, and in Wisconsin overall. So yeah. Great, thank you, Jess. Um, so I'm gonna talk a little bit more uh, about some of the things we've already touched on, um, but stretch at a glance, um, really the core of what we do is rooted in our Franciscan values, which you can see listed there. Um, so a question that I get very frequently from students is, you know, I'm not Catholic. Do I have to go to mass? Um, do I have to be a certain religion to go there? And the answer to that, all of that is absolutely no. Um, we are rooted in Catholicism, but that does not mean that you have to be Catholic to go here. We embrace students of all faith traditions and students who don't have faith traditions. So um, the values really are uh, more holistic that you can view from uh, really any perspective. So these are just you know good things that we think um, students should be able to embrace regardless of where they come from, what their uh, background is. A um, little more information about our school uh, as far as our population breakup. About 650 graduate students as of last fall and about 1250 undergraduate students. So we're just under 2000 total. Uh, one of the nice things about our campus, you know, as uh, Jessica had, or I'm sorry, Jess had mentioned, is that um, we are small. Uh, we're a very small school. Our teacher to student ratio is 10 to 1. So you're gonna know your instructors very well. They're gonna know you very well. Um, and that's an, a value piece that you get at a smaller institution. So if you want that individualized contact and attention from your instructors, you can get that here. Uh, versus a larger school, you're not going to have that. You're gonna be in classrooms that probably have 100 or maybe more students in them. So you're not going to have that. So if, if small classrooms is something you're looking at, um, we're definitely a very good, good place for that. Um, as Jess mentioned as well, uh, number one safest institution in Milwaukee, or in Wisconsin rather, and you know, being 10 to 15 minutes from downtown Milwaukee, uh, that's pretty special uh, that we're able to keep our campus as safe as it is, uh, and we've done so for years. Uh, this is nothing new that we're a safe institution, but it's something that we're actually able to really brag about now that, that we've been awarded this honor. Um, you can see below there then is our demographic breakup. So this is what I was talking about before as far as our diversity. And honestly, this really just continues to grow. Um, and compared to you know, 20 or 30 years ago, our demographic makeup has really become incredibly diverse. So you can see, um, you can see all that information there. So I won't talk specifically about uh, the different uh, ways that people identify, but as you can see, there's, there's a lot of diversity on this campus. Yeah, so next kind of talking about um, stretch education and how we prepare our students for their career field and the goals that you have as a professional. One thing that's really great about us is we really do focus on those high impact real world experiences. So essentially what that means is hands on experience in the career fields that you are interested in. One way that we do that is through the classes that you're taking in your major and minors, but also in our core professional classes. So these are your core courses that are really kind of amping you up to be the best version of yourself for um, academics, for professionalism, for your career field as a candidate out there searching for your next job and your career path. So that's a really great thing that we kind of have there. So they are all embedded within your courses and your coursework. Um, so that could be through your job internships. So that typically happens around your junior year or your senior year. That could be through your uh, volunteer work, our nurses, nurses who are doing their clinicals, who are doing CNAs. That could be through volunteer work with your organizations on campus that you're involved in 
That could be case studies in your business classes where you are working with local organizations for real world problems for Milwaukee companies and orgs. So it's a lot of great opportunities that our students have to really make sure that they are applying the knowledge that they're learning in their classrooms onto something tangible and something that they can put on their resume and really kind of test their knowledge and to show themselves out to the professional world and make those connections and so on. So during your time at Stritch, you're getting that exposure, you're building that capacity for that workload and that knowledge. Uh, you can do that also through your employment on campus. We have over 200 student employees. Admissions has student employees, the library does, the cafe, everywhere has different student employees. So if you've got something that you're interested in, the Stritch um, campus life is a really great opportunity to do that as well outside of those experiences that I mentioned like internships and service hours and volunteer work. So we're a very active campus, not only in the classroom, but outside in the Milwaukee area with our organizations and businesses and making sure that our students can become the best versions of themselves. All right, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about our learning communities, which is something that is uh, unique about our campus. Um, so we have a couple different learning communities that we'd like to highlight. Um, our Franciscan Servant Scholars and then our Leaders Initiative, which are you know, two separate programs. So our Franciscan Servant Scholars, um, there is a scholarship that is tied to being a Franciscan Servant Scholar. Um, so this is really based around students that are very interested in, you know, a maximum amount of volunteerism and a maximum amount of service activities out in the community uh, and surrounding areas. Um, and, and, you know, as it states there, the program connects academic coursework with service in the community. So it's tying together what you're learning in the classroom with what you're going out and experiencing in the community. So that's really uh, a great way to really continue your volunteerism. It's a great thing for a resume, um, but uh, you know, in general, it's just good, uh, a good learning experience uh, for you as a student. So um, as it says there though, uh, the amounts vary and it is competitive. So, you know, it's not like it, you know, we're just gonna hand you money. This is something that a lot of students wanna do. Um, so I'm not trying to, to defer you from uh, uh, wanting to do this, but just to say that, you know, it is something that's competitive um, so we're really looking for, you know, top notch students that want to do this. Um, our leaders initiative uh, provides students with the opportunity to build community, develop relationships, become engaged and enhance their experience. Um, so our leaders group, um, there's a number of great things. It's basically a learning community that it, much like the Franciscan servant scholars that you would uh, opt into uh, be selected into. And then you would stay with that community throughout your time on campus. So it's not just a freshman program. Uh, it's not just a first semester program. It's something that you do for all four years. So these are really great um, opportunities. Um, with the leaders program, you will be taking um, some courses with just leaders students. So it really kind of builds that community feel of this is a special thing. This is a unique thing that we are all leaders together. Um, and so there's a, 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 just a lot of uh, team building and uh, community building within that program um, and a lot of retreats and other special events that we do. Um, I believe typically, I mean, this year's special with COVID, uh, but typically we would be offering like, I believe it's a weekly or monthly uh, like leaders luncheon. Um, so you have the opportunity to meet with the rest of the leaders students over a lunch, free meal, awesome. Um, and then also to get that learning experience and community building uh, from this. Um, some of the uh, additional pieces here. Um, so as I mentioned before, our diversity has really grown here on campus. So we have the sixth highest growth of underrepresented minority students from 2010 to 2016. And honestly, these numbers just keep growing. So, um, you know, every single year, it seems like our campus is getting more diverse and we love that. Uh, that is that is why uh, we continue to do what we do here. Um, and as you can see, number one most diverse co-ed college in Wisconsin in 2018, again, speaking to our diversity, and then students from over four, from 44 countries. So, you know, that number fluctuates a little bit. I believe this year we have 41, um, you know, but typically it's, it's hovering around 40. And again, we probably have, you know, some of those countries, we probably have five to 10 or more students 
So it's not just 44 international students on campus, it's 44 countries. And then, you know, a lot of the, like I said, a lot of those have multiple students from them. So our, our international population is huge. Awesome. Yeah. So after you graduate college, of course, you want to go off and become successful, right? You want to get a job. I know that is every college grad's like number one worry is, can I get a job? Can I pay my bills? Can I pay student loans if you have any? Um, am I going to get a job in the career field that I want, that I have my degree in? At Stritch, we definitely do the best that we can to make sure that our students are getting that. In fact, 98.4% of our students are employed or in grad school six months after graduation. That statistic is huge because that is not only like a number one fear, like I said, but not every university ensures that their students are going to be able to go off and become successful professionals in their career field. So we really try to make sure that that experience that you're getting all four years, like I mentioned earlier, is applying towards your future and towards your career path and we're doing everything that we can to make sure that you are becoming the best professional version of yourself so that's through those internships whether they're required or you sought them out those through the connections that you made with your volunteer work and so on so moving on kind of into my next point 93 percent of our students complete an internship clinicals or student teaching so sometimes that internship can be required from the program like business, for example, would require an internship typically in your junior year, but a lot of our students end up having two internships. So they have one their junior year and they have one their senior year. It's so that you can build that capacity and can build those professional connections. And a lot of them end up employed at where they had their internships. It's a huge thing too, because then you already have those connections established. You have that name on your resume. They know who you are and you're continuing to build your skills at the same company. And you just kind of have that guaranteed pathway that's contributing to that employment six months after graduation. So some of our top employers where Stritch graduates work are the Milwaukee Public School System. So that's for our teachers, for our education majors, Mayo Clinic for our health science majors, Northwestern Mutual, Harley Davidson and 3M are all for our business majors. So that could be anywhere in communications and marketing, accounting, finance, um, sports management. It could be across the board. So human resources even. So a lot of our different programs are making sure that our students are getting those internships and then getting that job placement afterwards, not only in the Milwaukee area, but even further out of Wisconsin. So it's just a really great thing to see. Uh, we do also have the third highest salary after graduating. So lots of really awesome facts, lots of things that I'm very proud of that our, our staff and faculty are proud of. And it's such a cool thing to see our students graduate and go off into their career fields and just kind of see how proud and successful they are. So it's a really cool thing with our Stritch alum. All right, another very important part of our campus community and uh, your college experience, you know, whether you are a uh, athlete yourself or if you simply just want to, you know, catch some games here and there. Uh, we have quite a, uh, you know, large number of athletic teams here on campus. Um, and, um, you know, you can see the lists there. And our teams are, are very good. Um, we have had a lot of success in the last couple of years. Uh, actually, the shirt I have on underneath my dress shirt here is a stretch uh, uh, when the men's team won uh, the uh, NAIA championship a couple of years ago. So we're very proud of that success. Um, our men's and women's soccer teams, I believe, made it to the Elite Eight and Final Four um, a year ago. So, you know, again, just a lot of success across the board. Um, and, you know, these are great opportunities for you to continue your athletics if you were an athlete in high school uh, to continue with us. So, you know, if you're interested in that, let us know. We'd be more than happy to help get you connected with a coach uh, and to discuss that. Yeah, definitely. So kind of next talking about one of the larger pieces of your college search journey is, of course, tuition and aid. Every student also wants to know how much is this going to cost me? Is this collegeable a feasible option for me? Um, how much scholarship do you have? Do you take outside grants and loans and so on? So kind of moving towards that direction, looking at tuition and aid, we do have our yearly tuition on the screen there for you for our commuters and for our on-campus residents. You'll see that that is the same tuition. It's also the same for our in-state and out-of-state students. 
the only difference in the cost is going to be living on campus. So our first year students, we do have a residency requirement um, within a certain commuter radius. So if that is something that you are debating whether or not you wanna live on campus or off campus, definitely talk with us. We are able to let you know if you're within that commuter radius and if you're looking to save some money and make sure that all of your tuition is gonna be covered by any grants, scholarships, or loans, that's definitely an option. If you are wanting more of that college experience, then talk with us about what it's like to be an on-campus resident with the meal plan, um, with the residence life and the different orgs and events that come with that. A, new, a huge perk too for both our commuters and for an on-campus resident is the fact that we have free parking. So I love telling students that too. A lot of the time they're like, no way, that's so cool because some universities can charge $1,000 a year for parking your car on campus and some of our students will use it three times to go to the grocery store or something. So it's really great for our commuters to make sure that you're not having that additional cost. It's great for our out of state students, for our students who are more than that commuter radius so they can go home weekdays, weekends for laundry, home cooked meals and so on. So that's a really great perk. Looking a little bit more on the aid side. Uh, so most of you guys have probably heard of FAFSA. If you have not, definitely look into it. That's a huge piece of your college aid. Uh, that's available October 1st. So we do have our school code down there. So if you have a second to jot it down, or if you need it, you can always ask us again. But the priority deadline for FAFSA is gonna be December 15th. So I highly recommend if you are able to fill that out, go ahead and do it this, as soon as it opens. If you have any questions about how to fill that out or anything regarding federal aid, if you're eligible, what it all means, don't hesitate to reach out to us and our departments in financial aid. We are more than willing to help you through that process because it really is tricky and messy. I filled out myself when I was a college undergraduate student and it is just very tricky. So we're more than willing to help you with that. If you wanna kind of guess a little bit more about cost, we do have a net price calculator as well, but I will just kind of let you guys know to ease your minds a little bit about the cost is that our average net tuition is less than $5,000 a year. And that's huge because I did not pay that little for my college degree and I wish I would have. So it's definitely something we're really proud of to make sure that you're getting this great education and we're doing everything we can for you guys, but you're also not giving up everything in your pockets to attend stretch. We really want to make this a feasible option for you guys. So if you have any questions about any financial aid or the tuition costs, always reach out to us and we'll kind of talk a little bit more about scholarship opportunities too. All right, yeah, so here's uh, some information about our scholarships and grants that we offer uh, here at the university. So. Our Franciscan Heritage Scholarships range from fifteen dollars to $22,000 per year. Um, so these will be based on uh, your cumulative GPA and or, uh, or I should say, and your ACT or SAT. But uh, we are a test optional school, which Jess will talk a little bit more about what that exactly means in a little bit. Um, but just to know that uh, the scholarships are based on uh, the GPA and then the test score if you want to submit that. Um, we do offer a campus visit grant. So basically anybody that comes to campus, uh, either in person or for a virtual tour and, and visit with a counselor, automatically gets $500 per year. And we renew this every single year, uh, much like the Franciscan Heritage Scholarships. These are renewed automatically for you every single year. So literally there's nothing that you need to do to get that money other than to be admitted and to attend school and we give it to you. So there's no additional forms, there's no essays you need to write, uh, none of that stuff. So this is really just our way of um, rewarding you for, for being a great student and for choosing Stretch. Um, okay, full tuition. Uh, this is basically our honors competition is, is what this is referring to. So uh, if you are honors eligible, and uh, we can talk a little bit more about what that means in a little bit, uh, but if you're honors eligible, we would contact you and invite you to our honors competition. Um, and then basically there would be a competition. There'd be some extra materials that we would need from you, letters of recommendation and things like that. Um, and then if you submit all that stuff, you come and attend. Um, and then if you're selected, you get a full tuition scholarship, which is nothing to, uh, to just ignore. This is a huge benefit. Uh, this last year, I believe, did we have two Jess? Two, we did. Two? Okay. 
Yeah, the year before we had one, and this, this program is growing. So, uh, you know, as the number of honors eligible students increases, uh, we will continue to increase the number of scholarships that we're offering. So, um, so absolutely, if you're honors eligible, don't overlook this. This is a great opportunity. And then we do have other scholarships. Um, our Timothy Dolan scholarship is for students that attended a Catholic high school. Um, so if you're eligible for that, that would be something that we would uh, award you. Again, nothing that we need to do with that other than to just confirm that you were there, which we would do with your transcript, so no big deal. Um, visual and Performing Arts Scholarships. So if you're in the theater, uh, music, arts, etc., cetera, um, those would be uh, additional scholarships that you can receive for that. Uh, Flayhive Athletic Scholarships. So if you are selected to be a member of an athletic team and our uh, coaching staff uh, choose to award you additional funding for being an athlete, uh, that would be another way. Uh, legacy, which would be for uh, students that have a uh, immediate relative that attended. Um, if you have any questions about what constitutes an immediate relative, you can let us know. But basically, it's like mom and dad, brothers, sisters, or children. Um, so, uh, you know, if like your third aunt on your mother's side uh, attended here, unfortunately, that's not close to enough of a tie. Uh, but we can still also work with um, a referral. Uh, which there would be opportunities for that to uh, uh, for your aunt or for you to receive additional um, incentives uh, for, for the uh, referral. And there's many other uh, opportunities as well. Um, so, you know, don't just see this list and think, oh, there's only four things. There's lots of other stuff that we can do. These are really just the highlights of what we can offer you as far as uh, scholarships and grants. And also this is aside from anything that you would be eligible through the FAFSA. Um, so we do recommend, as Jeff said on the previous slide, you know, we highly recommend that all students, regardless of whether you think you're going to be eligible for money through the FAFSA or not, that you fill it out. Because the worst case scenario is they'll tell you that you're not eligible for any aid. And the best case scenario is you may find some additional grants that you're actually eligible for. Um, grants are basically free money in case if no one's told you that before. So if you see grants that you're eligible for, absolutely take those. And so we, that's why we push you so hard to do the FAFSA is that we wanna make sure that you get every single dollar that we're, we and the government are willing to give you. We don't want you to pay more for your education than you have to. So do the FAFSA. Um, and then if, again, if you have specific questions about what your aid and uh, you know, out-of-pocket costs will look like, just let us know. That's what we're here for to help you guys get a better picture of what it's going to look like to be a strict student. Absolutely. So applying to Stritch, I see we already have a question in the Q&A about our application. So talking about our application a little bit, our application is free and online. It also is a rolling application. So what that means is that there is no deadline. So you are able to uh, fill it out as late as you would prefer, um, within reason, of course, classes starting, of course. Of course, we don't encourage that. Um, there are benefits to applying and being accepted to stretch sooner than later, like scholarship and aids, um, being able to participate in that full tuition scholarship opportunity if you are invited, um, other admitted students events, and so on. So if you are in fact interested, our application, like I said, is free and online. Fill it out as soon as you are able to and interested. Uh, you can do it through stritch.edu slash apply, or we are a part of the Common App as well, if that is something that you are filling out through your high school. For our application, we just require a few things. So of course on there, it's gonna be who you are, where you're from, what high school you went to, and so on. Fill that out so that way it is the most accurate it can possibly be. So make sure that you put an email that you check frequently, a phone number that is accurate and up to date with a voicemail box set up so that way we can contact you about things. Um, once you submit that, then you're gonna get automatic replies from us letting you know that we have received your application. And then you're just gonna work towards some additional materials, like for example, your high school transcripts. We do need these and these do need to be considered official. So what that means is it needs to come through an online service like Parchment, or it needs to come directly from your high school, whether that is by mail or email to an admissions counselor or admissions at Stritch, directly from your high school counselor or from your principal's office or whatever department is sending those transcripts. So 
if you have questions about that, let us know. Um, that is one of the key pieces that way we can see that GPA, which is needed for admissions purposes, also needed for scholarship. Next is going to be personal statements. Uh, we do highly encourage these. If a student is choosing the test optional route, which I'll kind of touch on, it is going to be required. So we will need that just so we can kind of see who you are as a student um, with your own words, not only just from the A's and B's and C's or whatever grades you're receiving from your high school and your math, English, Spanish and painting class, but we want to see how you're conveying yourself in words, uh, what your background is, what your story is, if you had any hardships and that's why maybe your GPA is a little bit lower. Uh, what your goals are, what kind of professional you want to be, if you want to be a doctor or an English teacher and so on. So if you have a personal statement, we highly recommend you submit that, personalize it. We really want to get to know who you are because not all the time do we get to meet each student in person. So that's a really great opportunity for you to kind of tell us a little bit about you. Next would be test scores. So if you were able to take the ACT or SAT this year, uh, we do require and accept both test scores. So you can submit those. If you were not able to, or let's say you're unsure about your test score, you can go the test optional route. However, going the test optional route is gonna require those additional materials, like I said, a personal statement, some letters of recommendation and so on. So make sure that you are staying in contact with your admissions counselor at Stritch whether that's myself or John or someone else in our office to kind of talk more about what that path looks like. I will also let you know that that can have some significant difference in your scholarship eligibility. Um, it just kind of changes things because we don't have a clear path because we're looking more at who you are as a student rather than some test scores and so on. So like I said, make sure if you're going test optional, you stay in constant communication with us and are very clear and responsive in that path just because there are a lot more requirements to it. ACT and SAT, if you have test scores, you can submit them. Um, we have our codes down there. If you need them, let us know. But you can send that directly through us um, to us through the ACT or SAT website. I also always encourage students to kind of chat with their uh, high school counselor. Sometimes high schools are able to send those test scores. So that way there's not an additional cost for you to send it through the test website. Um, I will also let you know that the way that the test scores work is it's kind of a matrix for admissions purposes. So it's a balancing act between high school GPA and test scores. And then of course, if you're going test optional, that's a completely different path. So if you have a lower test score, I still encourage you to just submit it. That way we can at least just see it. And you never know, maybe your lower test score, but you have a higher GPA is gonna balance out to being accepted, but also maybe to a higher scholarship. Maybe you thought that that test score was too low to get a decent scholarship, but you could still get our $19,000 scholarship, which is a lot of money. So I always encourage our students to just send it. If you don't wanna send it as official, talk with your admissions counselor. You're assigned one specific admissions counselor, like I said, myself or John or someone else. And you can tell me what your ACT or SAT test score, and I'll let you know where you're kind of sitting. And if you're not comfortable submitting it just yet, we can work on things and we'll let you know um, what the best path is for you. So something to keep in mind with admissions materials. If you have any college transcripts, you can submit those as well. Uh, that's something that I always encourage too, because you can get that credit for stretch. That way you're taking less classes, you got some general education courses out of the way, less tuition per credit cost. So that's some really great opportunities. As well as AP and IB. So if you have taken any of those in high school or you're contemplated taking them in your senior year or junior year now, totally do it. Um, I highly recommend it, you never know. If you get the passing score, that's awesome because like I said, you are eliminating those classes that you're going to need to take and you're going to dwindle down the cost of your college degree, the time it's going to take to get it and so on. So I highly, highly encourage that. We do also have placement exams. So for our students who maybe struggled a little bit in the math or English section of their ACT and you're going to need to take that placement exam because you felt that that was an accurate reflection, you can absolutely do placement exams too. So we do have tons of different opportunities for our students to apply, be accepted, and get the best placements and scholarship opportunities that we have. So, yeah. Okay, so uh, I'm sure you're all asking what's next. Um, so to uh, kind of get the ball rolling, really the next step here is to submit an application. Um, one of the highlights uh, I like to bring up in regards to our application is that it's free. Uh, not all college applications are free. So, uh, you know, applying here 
uh, it's really kind of no harm, no foul. And as Jess mentioned, you know, we can give you a lot of information about what it would look like without getting official documents from you. So, you know, if you just want to apply, kind of see where things lie, um, that's awesome. And we do recommend that. Uh, you can actually um, apply on our website, stritch.edu, um, and there's a link for the application on that page. Um, again, submitting your materials, taking care of your FAFSA, these are all important things. Um, one thing in the middle there though, scheduling a visit with Stretch. You know, again, uh, this ties back to A, that scholarship opportunity for the additional $500 per year. So we do recommend that our students get here because $500 extra dollars towards your education is again, it's a great opportunity. Um, and we can do that either virtually or in person. Um, so, you know, if you're out of state or even just, you know, a uh, different part of the city, a uh, different part of the state, you know, there's a lot of reasons that you can't necessarily get to campus. But we want you to be able to make that connection with an admissions counselor uh, to make sure that Stritch is the right place for you. Uh, it's a very important part of the college selection process is finding the right school for you. Not every school is the right fit for everybody. And we understand that. We want to make sure that if you want to be at Stritch, that it is in fact the right fit for you. Um, so that's a really good thing to do is to visit, see what the campus feels like, uh, and or to just talk with a counselor uh, to kind of get a better sense about the campus and the community here. We typically have a lot of on-campus events going on, uh, but of course, I'll just say it again, COVID, um, we don't right now. Um, our our on-campus options are a little bit limited, um, but we still are doing in-person visits uh, and we are doing all the virtual stuff as well. Um, if and when we are planning and uh, hosting any in-person events, which we are talking about some, for this fall, uh, we will market those and make sure that they are available uh, for people to sign up for. Um, we recommend that you join us on Zimi. It's a great way to get connected with the, the university and also with other incoming uh, students. Uh, so it's a great social media feature. Um, there's our um, social media tag right there as well. And then also um, another great way to scan that QR code. Um, if you're on an Android, um, you would need to have uh, or basically any non-Apple, I guess, whatever, um, you're going to need to get a QR code scanner and then scan that with your QR code app. Um, but, you know, you'll have access to this video after the fact. So if you don't have that QR scanner now, don't worry about it. Um, come back and scan it later and you're good to go. So if you need any of our contact information, we do have it on the screen there. So you can type that down really quick on your phone, write it down, take a picture of it. Um, we do have myself, John, and our other admissions counselor, Erica, up there. Each one of us works with students from different areas um, across the United States and internationally. So uh, if you have any questions, reach out to one of us or the admissions at stritch.edu. You can contact us there and then that way we can find you the right admissions counselor and make sure that you're working with the same person consistently. But you can always ask us questions at any time. You can ask us questions right now too. So as we're kind of wrapping up our presentation to you guys, are there any final questions that we can answer for you all? I hope there's questions. And I'll just remind everybody as well, you can see the, the link there for the application and for the visits as well. Um, so, you know, we do recommend, you know, get on campus. That's a very important part of your college selection process. Um, you know, Jess and I can be all smiles and, and unicorns and rainbows here on this, uh, on this webinar, uh, but it's really important for you to get a sense of what the school feels like in person. Um, is it the right size for you? Does it offer the right majors? Um, you know, what is the student demographics? Uh, what are the amenities on campus? You know, these are all very important pieces to your college selection process. So, you know, we recommend visit, you know, find your top three, you know, top five schools and, and get there. Uh, visit those schools and see what it's actually like to be there on campus. Uh, sit in on a class. Uh, it's another great way. Uh, knowing how the faculty interact with students. That's a very important part of what your, you know, next four years are going to look like because that's, you know, ultimately the decision you're making is where am I going to be for the next, you know, three to four years. So uh, having the best sense of what that experience is going to look like is critical. Definitely. 
as we're wrapping up our time here, it doesn't look like anyone have any questions. So I'll just kind of tell a small personal story about campus visits. I actually was committed to a different university when I was searching for my college and was young and 17 years old, 18 years old. And I loved that university. And then last minute, someone told me to tour a different place. So I was like, are you sure? I'm not so sure about that. Like I'm, I'm committed, I deposited and so on. Um, so I went on that campus tour of that other university and it completely changed my entire path. I ended up going to that place instead just because that campus tour made such a big difference. And I know it's cheesy, but it's a gut feeling, you guys. When you're on that campus, you just kind of have a small little feeling and you meet people and you talk to current students and professors and staff and you have a gut feeling and you just kind of know where that's going to go. So I cannot urge this enough that it is so important to get a feel for the campus. If you are able to visit Stritch or anywhere else that you're interested in, check out campuses, whether that's Google Images, that's coming in person, that's any virtual opportunities, do everything you can do because it all comes down to what feels right for you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Jess. That was a great way to close this up. So again, here's all of our information here, guys. So. Uh, feel free to reach out to any of us, uh, schedule your visit, submit your application, and we look forward to talking with all of you very soon. Yeah, thanks guys. All right, I want to do a, uh, give a big thank you to our uh, presenters um, from Cardinal Stritch for joining us today, and thank you to all of those who have attended. Um, do want to let you know that once you close out this, we'll get a quick survey. We'd love to hear your feedback about ways we can improve our programming and moving forward. Um, beyond that, also, again, just that reminder that you can sign up for additional sessions at WACAC.com, and you can also access this session and this recording, especially with all the great information if you need to go back and revisit it, or again, if you want to do share with some friends um, and share your experience here, um, please do uh, go about uh, doing so. So again, with that, I want to thank everybody and hope you have a wonderful um, rest of your Thursday afternoon. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.